All right, guys, welcome to the final episode of the Django and JavaScript quiz application tutorial series, where we are simply going to finish finally our project. So there are a few things left to do, but the biggest one I think is to simply include this time in the quiz itself. So whenever we proceed to the quiz, in the upper right corner, we should see a countdown, okay? And whenever the time finishes, the data should be sent and we should see the results, all right? So this is the main thing that we are going to take care of in this part, but we will also do some smaller things. And I think the good news is also that to this part, I will provide the full source code so you can find it in the description below. All right, guys, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is to create a row over here, okay? So we would like to have a row with two columns. So the first one is going to be this one, where we have the simple math and score to pass. So in other words, where we have the quiz title and what is the score to pass. And then we will have another one where we will have the countdown, okay? So in order to get started on this, I'm going to go to um, quizzes, then we need to find the templates directory quizzes and find quiz HTML. We need to head over to block content and over here let's create a div class equal to row row and then let's close up the div inside let's create two additional divs with a class of call okay so I'm going to copy this and paste it below okay and here I'm going to add text right and I'm going to put in count down okay and then what I'm going to do is to take this part and put it into the first div inside of the div with a class row okay so let's take a look at this now. I'm going to hit refresh and we have countdown and we have simple math score to pass. Perfect. Okay, so this is the first thing. Then what we want to do is to create a back button. Okay, so I'm going to do it below the row. All right, so somewhere over here, I'm going to add a button with a class equal to and then I'm going to put in btn btn danger and I'm going to simply close off the button and then I'm going to put go back All right let's save this and let's see how this looks and there is our go back button it looks kind of nice so I'm going to leave it as it is and now with this go back button we should be taken to the main page okay so if we go to the urls we should be taken to the main view all right so as the next step we need to go to quiz html and let's actually change the button to a and then let's add ref okay and then let's put in url URL and let's close it off over here and then we will have quizzes and then I think it was main view the name so let's verify this very quickly URLs main view okay so the app name quizzes and then main view this is exactly what we are doing over here quizzes main view okay so let's save this and let's see if this will work I'm going to hit refresh and something went wrong and okay we didn't change this tag let's save this and go back again and let's press go back and we are back okay so this is working okay so as the next step let's go to quizjs and over here we have ajax get and we also have a send data 
where we are using the jQuery Ajax method to send the data, okay? So what we need to do is to take care of, take a look into the Ajax get, where we are getting the data, and in the success block, if everything goes well, so in the success block, we should activate the timer. And this is going to be the function that I'm going to create over here. So let's write const activate timer. And this will take in the time. And then we will simply console log the time. Okay. So now, as mentioned before, I want to use this activate timer and put it over here at the end. And I want to pass the response, not data, but response time. So if we go to the views, um, let me just verify that, uh, what are we passing. Okay, so here is the data and the time. Okay, so this is the quiz data view and we are passing the data and the time. So right now, if we go back to quiz.js, we can write not the response data, but response time. Okay, so we are passing response time. So we should see it over here. Let's save this and let's see if this will work or not. I need to right click inspect and we need to go to the console and I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, uh, it didn't work. So this the reason for this is that I actually need to access the quiz. So I'm going to press yes. And here we see hello world quiz, but we don't see the time. So I'm going to clear the cache, command shift R. And here is the time. Okay. So now it's working. All right. So this basically means that we can continue working on this activate timer function. And what I'm going to do first is actually I'm going to jump into um, the Django administration and I'm going to open the simple math quiz. And as you can see, the first remark for us is that over here we have an integer field, okay? So we won't be operating with, um, we will be only operating with full numbers. So we won't have like one and a, one and a half, okay? Because now if I save this, we will have enter a whole number error. So this is the first thing that we need to take from here. And then we have duration of the quiz in minutes. So we can actually put in two over here. So now I can demonstrate what we are going to do first. Let's go back. And what I'm going to do is to create a variable let minutes. And this is going to be equal time minus one, and then I'm going to console log minutes. Okay, so let's save this and let's go back. And over here we have two, okay, right now, because we changed this to, to two, the time of the quiz. If we go to Django administration, we change this to two, and then we have minutes, where we have one because we we did over here time so two minus one and the reason for this is because uh, when this initially starts we won't have um, two minutes we will have for example one minute and 59 seconds okay so this is why we are subtracting the minutes at the very beginning. However, what we can do to uh, display the full time over here in the countdown is to simply do a if check. If check. But before we actually do this, we need to refer to the time timer box. And I think we didn't set the timer box. Let's go to quiz HTML. Over here, we just have a div with a class called text, right? 
So what I'm going to do over here is also to add an ID and I'm going to put in timer box. Okay, so now we can save this and we can go to quiz.js and let's grab this timer box. Timer box is equal to document and then get element by ID timer box. All right. So right now we can uh, check if the time length is smaller than two. And if this is the case, we will modify this timer box. And in other case, we will modify it in a little bit different way. So let's see how this goes. So first of all, time, and we need to put in two string, and then we can perform length. And let's do it like this. So if this is the case, what we want to do is to refer to the timer box in our HTML. And with the use of backticks, what I'm going to do over here is to put in, in bolded font, something like this. So I'm going to put in zero and then I'm going to put in the time. Okay, because here the length is smaller than two. So the time can be up to nine. Okay, so if it's 10 minutes, it, it won't meet this requirement over here. And then as mentioned before, we are dealing with an integer field. So this part will be the same for both cases. And now I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. And here we can get rid of the zero because this code will run only if we have um, the time length uh, greater than one. So basically uh, it has to be minimum of 10, okay? So it will be for the time 10 minutes and higher. All right, so now we can actually save this and we can go back and let's see what do we have over here after refresh. We see two, two minutes, perfect. So as the next step, I'm going to head over to quiz HTML and I'm actually going to get rid of this countdown. This div is going to remain empty and then I'm going to go back to quiz.js and I'm going to continue working on this activate timer function. So I'm going to delete the console log time and I'm going to delete the console log minutes. And now I'm going to set another let seconds and this is going to be equal to 60. And then I'm going to also put another let display, this let display seconds, something like this. Okay. And yeah, basically I can also put in display minutes. All right. So now we can create a function with a set interval. So I'm going to name it timer. And this is going to be equal, as mentioned before, set interval. And this will get executed every single second. Okay, so it's 100, 1000 milliseconds. So basically this means this is one second. And over here, we are going to console log, I'm running. running all right so i'm going to save this hit refresh i'm running i'm running i'm running as you can see it runs every single second okay so that basically means that at the very beginning instead of console log i'm running we can refer to the seconds we've set them as 60 and here we can subtract one second just like this and then we can do an if check if seconds is smaller than zero then what we want to do is to set the seconds to 59 and then we want to subtract subtract the minutes okay so this is the first case then we can 
do another one if minutes and then to string and length is smaller than two and in this case we want to refer to the display minutes because at the end we are going to modify the timer box with the display seconds and the display minutes so now we want to refer to display minutes and here we are going to put in zero plus minutes okay so this is a similar case scenario to the one we did over here all right perfect so in other case we just want to put display minutes equal to minutes Okay, so as mentioned before, this works in a very similar way to the thing that we did at the top. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing for seconds. So let's write if and then seconds to string length is smaller than two. We want to put in display seconds equal to zero plus seconds. And in other case, in other case, we want to set display seconds equal to seconds, just like this. All right, and there's one more scenario, very important one where we have a situation where the minutes are equal to zero and the seconds are equal to zero. This basically means that our time has expired. So here we will just put in console log time over. All right. And now what we need to do is to refer to the timer box and we are going to modify it, as mentioned bef before, with the display minutes and display seconds. So timer box inner HTML is equal to, and again, we are using backticks, bolded tags. Here, let's put in display minutes, where are display minutes, display minutes, okay. And here we will have display seconds. All right, so let's see how this is looking. I'm going to hit refresh. And yeah, as you can see, this is actually working. All right, guys, so we are approaching the deadline. So let's see what will happen after uh, the counter countdown finishes. Okay, and as you can see, we have the time over. However, this is still running. And yeah, the first thing that we would like to do is to prevent this from happening. So what we need to do is to, first of all, let's change this back to one minute. So I'm going to put in one minute and then save and continue editing. And then I'm going to head over to this part of the code. I'm going to add an alert time over okay but we would also like to have a clear interval okay so we would like stop this set interval from running and in order to do this we need to write clear interval and we need to pass in the timer okay the name that we set over here so this should do the trick and the final thing is to simply execute the send data so below the alert we can put in send data okay so let's save this and let's take a look at how this will work okay so now we have one minute because we we changed this and i'm just going to answer one question Let's take a look at what will be the result. All right, guys, so let's take a look at what will happen over here. 
Okay, we see time over. However, over here we see still that there, there is one second. And I'm going to press OK. And we have the results. So everything is working. So we have the, your result is 33% because we answered one of the three questions. These, these two um, other questions weren't answered. So this is working. And one modification that we can do over here is to simply go to this block. And this is actually the easiest solution to add a set timeout over here. And I'm just going to take this and put it over here. So this should be executed after half a second. And here I'm going to reset the timer box to zero, zero. So timer box inner HTML is equal to, and then I'm going to put in I don't need to use backticks in this case because I'm just going to put in 0, 0, 0, 0, like this. All right, and now let's save this and let's hit refresh. Again, I'm going to answer maybe one question or maybe let's answer correctly two questions and let's see what will happen. All right, guys, let's take a look what will happen over here. We have time over, zero, zero, we press OK, and we have two answers uh, answered correctly. So everything is working, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry that you had to wait so long for the final part and for the source code. I hope you guys can forgive me because I don't want to make any excuses, however, uh, most recently, I'm really, really busy. Too many projects and uh, too less uh, of time. Okay, guys. So, yeah, I once again want to thank you for completing this project and hope to see you guys in the next video I will publish. Have a great day and bye-bye.